Hello, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. Today I'm going to be looking at the third of my comparisons of some of the best image editors on the market today. Previously I've looked at the Nick collection, which you can see on screen the results from that, and also the Alien Skin X3, again the results you see on screen. Today I'm going back to the starting image, which is on screen now. This was edited in Lightroom just to do a raw conversion and we're going to take a look at the On One Photo Raw 2018 editor. As before, I've created a duplicate layer and I've converted that for use with smart filters. And I'm going to run the On One Effects, so On One Effects 2018. Now one of the things you can do with On One is use some of the presets that you see over on the left and there's a lot of these and some of these are actually quite good. I do like a lot of the landscape ones because immediately you select one of those it creates a look that actually is quite good. Now I'm not going to use these today I'm going to actually edit this image from scratch so I'm going to reset everything there I'm just going to hide the filters and we'll start to add and build up filters. When you're working with On One, you actually work with these filters that you can add over on the right side of the screen. These filters, as we've got them at the moment, are global filters in that they target the entire image. But as you'll see, you can actually couple that with masks to limit the effect that they're having. Now, two of the filters that I tend to use all the time are the Tone Enhancer and also the Color Enhancer. And I'm going to start with the Tone Enhancer with this image simply because it's actually a bit light at the moment and I want to darken it down so that I can see the colours and the saturation a bit better. If we add the Tone Enhancer, the idea of the Tone Enhancer is that it lets you control the tones in the image, so how bright or how dark these are. And you can target the contrast, the highlights, the shadows and so on. I'm actually a fan of the curve and it's a shame that they hide that because it's quite a powerful tool and simply taking the mid-tones and dragging it down can actually darken the image which is one of the problems with this. Now when you create an image if it's too bright or too light you tend to find that the saturation and colours aren't very strong in that image and so often it's quite a good idea when you're dealing with an image that's light just to darken it down very slightly. Now the problem when we do this is that the castle up here starts to become too dark. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a mask that will actually limit the adjustments on the castle. We could use the paint out brush that we've got at the moment. So simply clicking on the castle we could paint out the castle and that will create our mask. Let's just move the opacity up to full strength and you can see it. I'm going to turn on as well this perfect brush feature and the idea of the perfect brush is it will look at what's below the center of the brush and it will actually select like pixels that are the same when you click so if I click that once or click around the area of the castle you can see if I view that we've created a, a view of the castle quite well now I've not done that very well simply because of the brush is quite large and I've not been quite as careful so what I'm doing now is just painting back in so I'm turning the mask white in those areas. Just so you're aware black on a mask will hide the effect white on a mask will allow the effect to be seen. So if I go back to my image now you can see that the effect I was adding with the curve down here doesn't affect the castle anymore. Now some of the other tools in here are also very neat. This compression slider is very good as well. What it does is it compresses in the histogram without losing a significant amount of contrast. So that will make the brighter areas slightly darker and the dark areas slight, slightly lighter. And then I can also add in some further contrast to the scene as well as control all the other tones in the image. OK, 
Okay, so just to show you what the difference is that that's made, I can actually turn the filter on here or turn the filter off here. So immediately you can see that the, the toning of the image has created a much nicer image. It's not quite as soft as the other image was, but we're going to deal with that one later. So now the next filter that I tend to add is the color enhancer. And this is going to let me target the colors in the image to adjust how saturated they are or adjust the hue. And we'll start by just adjusting the temperature very slightly. I'm going to use tint to start off with because one of the things I like about this image is it's got a nice purpley feel to the image. And we can easily lose those tones if we just simply make everything too warm. And I like the contrast between the blue in the sky and also the yellow in this cloud. And at the moment you can't see the yellow very well. Now one of the things I can use to target that is this adjuster here and I'll set it to adjust the saturation and now I can actually click on an area and drag to increase the saturation of that targeted colour. Now when I'm doing that you can see that the foreground has become far too strong and we're not having really any effect on the sky. So again what I want to do is break the image into two parts now. I'm going to do the foreground separately to the sky and we'll target the sky first. So one of the ways I can do that very easily is to use this mask tool over here and I can simply draw a mask and I can now set that and let's just get that the right way around. There we go. So what I've got now is a mask that's hiding the effect from the ground, but it's allowing the sky to be affected. You can see the mask there. So let's carry on now adjusting the sky. We'll increase our vibrancy in those areas and also some saturation. And we can also down here target individual color tones and I want to send, let's reduce the orange just slightly and we'll send the hue of the orange over towards the, the red side rather than the yellow side. And one of the other things we'll do here is on the magentas we'll really increase the saturation there of the magenta and we can almost send that out towards the purple end. And I'm also going to reduce the brightness of a couple of these sliders as well. So just to show you that effect, it's quite subtle on the sky. Um, probably need to improve or increase the saturation just slightly. And that's looking about how I want it. Now what I have to do is add a second uh, colour enhancer. And this time I'm going to use it to target this foreground here. So again, I'll use the masking bug. So we've added a, a mask bug there. Again, you can see the mask up here and you can switch to the view. And now we can actually warm very slightly the foreground and we'll increase the vibrancy on it as well. Now I'm not going to go too far with this because in a minute we'll add the sunshine filter as well which can create a, a very nice look. If you want to see how we're looking against the original you can turn the preview off and turn it back on. So already we're having quite a nice effect. I'm now going to go for the sunshine filter. Now that lightens everything and I'm going to want to apply that simply to this area here in the foreground. So I'm going to invert my mask and I'm going to use this paint in feature and I'll keep the opacity relatively low. I'm going to turn off the perfect mask and I'm just going to paint in the effect now onto my foreground. I 
think I'll just include that bit of sand as well. I'm going to turn the mask back on and just paint this area up here of the castle. Okay, that's made a, a reasonable mask. We don't need it to be perfect. All we need to be able to do is just concentrate the effect. And now I'm going to warm up the effect in these areas. I'll just reduce that slightly, increase my saturation and add a little bit of the glow effect in as well. So there you can see the effect of the sunshine filter. And now I'm going to add one of the filters that I really like the effect of in a lot of landscape scenes, especially at sunset, and that's the glow filter. This can be too strong, but let's see how we get on. So immediately you can see the effect. It will enhance saturation. It gives a nice dreamy effect for the image as well. And we can control how wide the halo is of the glow as well as the amount. And we've got these different modes we can use here. And strangely, I actually like the soft or the soft fill, uh, soft light strong adjustment. There we go. Now, I like the effect, but I don't want it on the castle, and I don't want it on some of the clouds or part of the beach. So I'm going to add in of a mask and this time I'm going to paint out the effect in certain areas. So I'm going to paint it out on the castle. I'm going to paint it out on part of the sand here. and also on the sky up here. So I'm happy now with the way that's looking. Let's just turn it off and turn it back on. So it's starting to look good. And finally, I'm gonna add a vignette effect. And I always use this big softy, it's quite good. Now, I'm also using this overall opacity. So once I've created the look I want with a filter, I can use the opacity slider just to fine tune that. Now, the only thing that I'm looking at now on this is the castle area. I'm thinking it looks slightly too dark and needs to be lightened, but I don't want to lighten it all too much. So I'm going to use, rather than one of the filters, I'm going to use a local adjustment. So we've been using up until now this overall settings, but we've been using it with masks. This time I'm going to use local adjustments and I'm going to make sure that I've got my perfect brush on and I'm going to be painting in onto the castle area. And that's selecting the castle as I paint. I've just spilled over there slightly. I can view the mask that I'm creating here which actually now I've done the first part of the selection is looking quite good. And it allows me to carry on painting quite easily. I'm going to switch to the painting out now so I can just tidy up the, the mask around here and around here. That's looking quite good. And now I can actually feather it as well, just to help blend it slightly. And that looks quite good. So if I switch back now, I can now affect just that area with my adjustments. Now we'll just return the exposure slider to the default. I can increase my 
contrast onto the castle. I can also pull up the shadows very slightly. Is the highlights having an effect? No, it's not. That's fine. And I can actually warm the castle very slightly and even tackle the saturation levels. And one of the other adjustments that's quite good here is this structure slider which tends to help bring out the detail in the in the castle there. Now I quite like the effect that that's having but this time I just want to paint in a little bit here of the adjustment I've just made. And I'll return to the overall settings. So I think I want my vignette to be a little bit stronger now, now that I've adjusted the castle, and that's okay. I'll look at the overall preview. So that was the original starting image. That's the adjusting image. And it looks quite strong in comparison to what we started with. So just collapse all these down. So these are all the filters that I've applied. And what I've got is this overall filter at the top. And I can now use that to adjust or fine tune the effect. So rather than having all the filters at full strength, I can just ease them off slightly. I'll check that on the preview. And that's much better. So I can now click the done option there and I'll return back into Photoshop. Here we are then back in Photoshop. I can see my changes to the layer there for the that I applied with on one. If I turn them off, you can see the original image. I can also compare that to the Nick collection. So there's on one and there's the Nick collection. And also there's the alien skin version compared to the Nick collection. Sorry, compared to the on one. In terms of usability, I find On One very easy to edit with. It is a little bit more complex than some of the other editors simply because of the number of options that you've got in there. You can create absolutely all sorts of things. I've literally just scratched the surface today. In terms of the quality that it produces as well, it's absolutely beautiful when you're looking at the detail. I'm not going to do the comparison in detail today with the other editors, but just to say I'm actually very impressed by On One Photo Raw 2018. It's a great product. I'm Robin Worley. You've been watching Lenscraft. I hope you found that interesting, and I'll see you in the next session. Thank you.